Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to NZJ Group where tech, lifestyle, sports and entertainment are all discussed. Today we'll be talking about whether you should get a laptop or whether you should get a tablet or can your tablet replace uh, your laptop for day-to-day -day use. I'm joined by my friend Mustafa. Hey, how's it going Mustafa? How are you doing? Hey, how are you man? How are you? How are you doing? Good? Uh, good, good, good. So, as we all know that the line between tablets and laptops is basically blurring because tablets are getting more and more powerful and useless I mean useful it's now becoming more difficult for some users that whether they need a laptop or whether they need like a tablet or can their tablet fully replace your uh, laptop just like this like I mean just like desktops were replaced by laptops remember that's so, exactly true and we can see also the tablets are now getting more powerful and more like more screen into it and they have integrated keyboards and they even they have some mice now so they are getting closer and closer to being an actual computer and it's actually some people they did replace their computers and their laptops with an ipad or with a tablet so those tablets are actually getting real really really, really close to being a full functional computer but still there's a thin line there's a thin line that differentiates a tablet from a or an ipad yeah. from a laptop yeah but that's what we're going to talk about today <laughs> oh yeah that definitely definitely so do you think it that we have reached a peak that it's safe to say tablets can fully replace your laptops or still I like we need more I'm, improvement we actually definitely need more improvements but everybody is looking for that one ultimate computer that could do everything into it like it's a laptop and it's a tablet and it's it's a, it's a sketching pad. Everybody's looking for that one big thing that covers everything. And actually, those companies, they rarely do that because, first of all, if they did that, it's they, they are basically cutting one of the products out of the production line, and that's a loss for them. Mm. Obviously. So, and some companies, they actually taking, they are doing that, but they are doing that in not a very perfect way. There is some gaps in there as well. Oh, okay. For example, actually, I was just looking for the new service book three. Um, this is they call the ultimate computer. Oh, this, yes, this, yes. Like, yeah, it's a tablet, it's a, it's a computer, and it's a two-in-one. It's basically the, the screen detaches from yes. the keyboard itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you all did your research also about it. It's actually a good computer. And it's powerful. It has a it has a dedicated uh, graphic card. Mm -hmm. uh, it has it has actually uh, it comes in two two varieties, two screen sizes, 13 inch and 15 inch. Mm -hmm. And actually, it is pretty powerful, but the problem is that lies. It's actually uh, for the 15 model. After I was doing the research for the processor, it's actually just an i7 core, yeah, a quad core processor for both of them, for the 15 and the 13. And that's a, that's actually an underperforming processor, as we all as we all know, because there's in the market way more better prof uh, processors than this one. But still, the good thing about this one actually is two devices in one, because it could be a tablet and it could be a computer. I'm looking at the specs right now. I mean, it has a very powerful graphic card, like four gigabytes for the 13 inch, I believe, and six gigabytes for the 15 inches. I mean, that's crazy. Like six gigabytes, yeah, for the 15 inches. Right. I mean, you yeah. can run your gaming application. I mean, gaming or some other applications. Like for students, it's a perfect thing, you know. I mean, they can detach their uh, a screen or their keyboard at any time and use their pen. Uh, uh, and, and at the same time, they can play like uh, they can run some heavy applications, especially for engineering students, you know. But this exactly. comes at a very, very heavy cost, like you know, twenty one hundred Canadian dollar. Uh, exactly. Is it worth it, like, to have like a two in one thing? But but this is the only one in the market actually that has this functionality two in one. This is that you can't find any other laptop that actually detaches the screen from the from the computer itself. Yes, true. And with with this spec, like this yes, is the best spec you can get. Yeah, and actually for students, they do actually get a discount. Microsoft gives a discount for students, if you didn't know that. There's oh, right. a, yeah, yeah, there is a discount for students for Microsoft products, and they give actually about $800 of, of your purchases. Oh. But still, it's quite a big, it's quite expensive laptop. You could get the same specs, with uh, better specs actually, than this computer, mm -hmm. a way better a way better processor, a way, like everything, with a way, way cheaper price. But the point is, it's not going to be a tight screen. And the cool thing about this computer, actually, when you're doing work, for example, and you just yeah. want to you know, pass it over to your friend or to show off your, your colleague, mm -hmm. you could just see a touch and go there and just show him, you know? You could yeah. sketch on it. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a multi-thing a multi -thing computer, you know? It's not just like one thing. People actually will, especially uh, work producers, you know? Yeah. People who, who 
yeah, who produce the content, they are actually into the such a lab those because it's it's the as I said, it's the ultimate one. Yeah. Like one other thing I, I love about this lab, I mean this laptop or this tablet, uh, is that you can run your Windows applications. Like I know like Microsoft Service Two and Microsoft Service One, I believe they were they were using Windows RT, which basically relied on installing only apps from the app store. Like you couldn't run uh desktop applications, you know? Because yes. if they were using like processor ARM, something like that, and it was not it's compatible. Perfect. Yeah. But this thing is very compatible. Like now, this is the reason why I actually prefer everyone to go with the Surface Book 3 if they want something like two in one. If you go with iPad tablets or if you go with Chromebook, uh, you will definitely have like a application issues because now you have to only rely on App Store basically. Their application that's the, that's the similar version which is available in the App Store is not complete. Like for example, Adobe Premiere or Photoshop, they're not complete. Like they don't have like all the features. That's yes, it is limited. It is limited actually, and for the iPad, actually, you're not getting a, 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 a like as you know, it's an iOS. It's not even a, a Mac oh, OS. Yes. So, so there's a huge limitation right there. You can't even run your 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 programs in there, your applications. Yeah. It's a big big deal for most students, even for most uh, as you, we are talking about engineers. It is actually a big a big issue because. You, you should you should run some software. You should run even the word in there. It's not a full complete word. Yeah. It still has limitations in there. So this is a yeah. This is where where the iPad lags behind. You know. But it, even but for the Android, actually for the word and for the other you know uh, application, they do get pretty much close to the desktop version, but not as quite. But still better than the iPad version, I would say. Yeah, because Chromebooks is basically Linux based, and they they those like those laptops or tablets can run Linux applications. Like, there's some mm -hmm. good applications for Linux, right? And yep. I, I personally call Chromebook as a vegan option of laptops. To be honest, like you're restricting yourself to like very few limited features. You know, uh, it's basically like a it's totally reliant on cloud storage and online applications like i know it's getting very very popular like in education institutions only like mm -hmm. i know like my sister like when when she was like in elementary school like they were using like chromebooks a lot like because they knew like kids only need like my like uh, office and it's super cheap as well like the specs are totally low right they're using like, and the, yeah and, and the battery life of it is, is phenomenal because you're just using like web applications uh, and yeah. yeah, nothing else, right? Nothing, uh, something heavy. Like you, you're not installing anything on the Chromebook itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. But this world is changing now. Everybody's looking for applications to install. Everybody's looking for those heavy because, especially as a student, most people actually, most students, other than you know, as if we are speaking about engineering students, they actually looking for some performance in there. Like a bunch of power. So oh yes, true. Chromebook could do, yes, Chromebook could do you know day to day uses. But if you are a Chromebook user and you want something to sketch on, I, I'm not. I don't think Chromebook is the right cho choice for you because even you could, if you want to take notes, yeah, uh, the interaction of the screen. Uh, some of Chromebooks are do touch screen, but it's not as quite as good as if you're gonna take a Surface, uh, Surface Book or Surface Pro. That's a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. or even an iPad, the older versions. So mm. the, the writing experience on those devices are way more better than a Chromebook. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then another thing I want to bring up is about the connectivity, right? Like, like iPads, I know, like, they can use SIM cards. So basically, you can purchase, like, a, a internet plan from any network service provider and then insert your SIM card and then connect to any cellular network. But I'm not sure about the Surface Book 3. Does it have that SIM card slot so we can insert a SIM card anytime? It doesn't, like? doesn't, doesn't have, right? It doesn't have. Because I was uh, researching as well, well, yeah. Yeah. It does have actually the, the, the other Surface called Surface Pro X. Oh, that's that, that one, yeah? It does have 3G. Yeah. Oh, okay. It does have 3G. Yeah. But the yeah. Surface Book, it doesn't. But the other one actually runs the other version of Windows, which is the one that you talked about. The, oh, the, yeah, the one I that see. You could, yeah, virtual uh, model. Yeah. Oh, I see. Also, I see. actually, the other computer that is dual screen or multi-purpose wow. computer is the Asus uh, Audio. That's ZenBook, that's right? also one of the ZenBook. Yep. That's ZenBook my favorite Asus one. <laughs> Why is it though? It has. I mean, how can it not be? Like it has dual screen. Like it has that 
uh, monitor right above your keyboard. I was watching this video. I mean, for somebody who's a multitasker, so for example, they're typing something. So on their main screen, which is the, first, the, the, the top one, they're just basically typing something. And then in the bottom screen, they were just like watching a live stream of a sport, you know? It's a very right. cool thing. Yes. And the good thing about this computer, actually, especially for researchers as well, they, for example, they could have a, a Word document on the top and they could have their internet browser on the bottom and they could just research like this. Yeah. They don't have, they don't have, they don't have an extra monitor to do their work. It's yeah. actually a very handy, a very handy feature. Though, although, however, there was something, a, a very big drawback for this computer. And what's uh, that? For my, for my research, the biggest drawback, first of all, is the battery life. The battery life is not that great. Yes. Because it's a powerful computer. So yes. it has two screens to, to, to work with. So it's, the, the battery life is a huge issue. The mm -hmm. second thing is the positioning of the second screen. That's for the where the keyboard is. Oh. Uh, you have to actually to tilt your head a little bit down to, to yeah. look at it. Because it's not directly into the view of your eyes. Yeah. So that's, that's a drawback as well. But the good thing actually about that, that, that second screen, actually it's a matte finish, which means when you write with it with your pen, it will be just, feel just like a paper-like. Oh, so, I yeah, see. So, yeah, and actually it's, both screens are actually are test screens, and both screens actually they support uh, the pen. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, so the both of them you could write on, but the one on the bottom actually it's a matte finish, so it, it glides well with when you're writing with a pen on it. You, so that's the good thing. Yeah, that's, that's it's indeed a good thing. But you brought a very good point like, that you said, like, it's from ergonomics perspective, right? Like, you have to, like, uh, tilt your head every time. Like, you have to look down, right, to keep up with anything, right? Like, I, I saw, like, a prototype from Intel. Like, I, I don't know if they're going to release this laptop or not, but this is in prototype stages. Like, I forgot the name, to be honest. Like, they were basically... It was a laptop similar to Azus ZenBook, but they had it actually had like two screens that like you could uh, lift both of the screens at the same time. So the very main screen would go on the very top, and then the bottom screen would also go up. So you basically had like I don't know like the uh, I have to like find the name for it like yeah, but it's a super cool laptop. It was in a prototype stage. It's like if I can research about it, the Intel, I think it's called Intel Dual Screen Laptop. Actually, they fixed it. Asus themselves, they brought another laptop. Uh, actually, it's the same line, support you as well. I forgot oh. the name of it, but they, they addressed that issue in the other, the second generation of that computer. Oh, yeah, I see. They, actually, yeah, they made a mechanism where you, when you open the screen, actually this second screen will lift up a little mm. bit. If you yeah, if you search about it, you will find the new ver newer version. Actually, the screen lift, lifts up a little bit, so it will yeah. actually be on the on the view of the user as well. So they fixed, oh, they addressed yeah. But still, overall, I would say that computer, it is powerful. It has very great specs. It is very good. The one drawback, as I said, the main drawback is the battery life. And the second drawback is actually, the, it's, it's a bulky, man. It's bulky, to be honest. Yes, it is bulky, yeah. indeed. Yeah. It is bulky computer. So that's that's the major drawback from for some people. They want something they could carry. Like It's, a, it's meant to be a laptop, so you should carry it all around. And this computer is kind of bulky. So that's a drawback. I'm not sure if these uh, manufacturers can keep up with this. Like they're trying to come up with some innovative ways, like uh, introducing these two screens. But like I'm right now looking at the pictures of uh, this Intel Honeycomb Glacier laptop, which has dual screens, and both of them can be lifted. So the bottom screen is actually can be lifted at the angle of 45 degree, right? I think so. Yeah, it looks like the foot, and then the top one very straight. Oh wow! Yeah, you I'm see it, right? That, yeah. It's in prototype stages, like yeah, yeah. yeah but now the cool. the main screen is very very top. Like now you have to lift your chin up a little bit, you know. Yeah. But see, this is also bulky. This is Even also bulky, bulky. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. moment you like introduce another screen, it's gonna add another weight to it, you know. Not about the weight. Overall, you feel like it is like it takes size, you know. It's it's not a small laptop. It's not like compact. You feel like there's a lot of things going on. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is actually, yeah, I, I just saw it's actually a cool, uh, cool idea. And how, 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 how is that screen lifting the upper screen? Is it like there's a hinge in the below? Or? I think there's something at the back, yeah. The back, yeah, there's something yeah. in the back, yeah, that causes it to uh, lift up, yeah. But I, I was also looking at some uh, monitors which you can attach it to your laptop. Like, you don't need, like, a laptop which has a dual screen there are some monitors that are, that can be sold on, yep. online on amazon 
you basically yep. have had like a USB cable and you attach it to that screen and then you attach like that cable basically comes from that uh, monitor itself and attaches it to your USB port. But uh, I saw that one. It doesn't even, I saw that actually it doesn't even need power. It doesn't goes need... to the USB itself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. That's the cool. Yeah. But uh, you all just need the USB port. That's it. But yes. the point is, actually, you still have to carry another screen now with you. Now it's a it's a different package you're gonna carry around. Yeah. So I think this thing, but it uh, yeah, it is on the, the other screen. Actually, I thought it's AUO, the company they produce those screens. Oh. The problem with that actually uh, is the screen quality. It's not that great. It's not it's that just great. An 80, it's oh, just yeah. an eighty p screen. Mm. Yeah, it's not that great, and mm. still it is bulky. Uh, but it is actually a portable one; you could carry it eventually. But it's a good, it's a good solution if somebody wants to to have a portable second screen with him all the time. All it's the a time. very good solution. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't need power for connecting to it. It's just you just need your laptop. That's USB cable does everything for you. Okay. I want to ask about your setup. My setup, I have a I have a Mac with a X. So with another monitor, I, I bought an LG one. It actually does connect to the AC, mm -hmm. and it is 1080p. It's not 4K, but the good thing it's it's an affordable. I bought it like for eighty dollars, brand new. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it 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 you know, it helps me to to have more real estate to do my work. You know, I could always you know have something running on this screen and another thing running on this screen. You feel like more productive that way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Especially like I feel like do, having uh, more real. estate, Screen state is so important in any type of work, even if you are doing search only. Like if you even you are searching the internet, you yeah. always want to have some, for example, YouTube running on the other side, and you should, you know, you're doing your work on the other side, or you have some reference material on one screen, and then you have your your document open on another screen. So uh, it's quite actually hefty, and actually some compute some programs, especially in the engineering department, yeah, it actually supposed to have a second screen like there's no option because mm -hmm. if you don't always have to minim to minimize the app to open the other thing. Because it mm. can't run both of them together on the same screen. It should yeah. have its own screen. But it's always going to be minimized. And when you open the other one, the other one goes down, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's quite hectic, you know? So it's a must, you know, to have a dual screen. I was working on the program, and actually it was a must to have a second screen. Because without it, like the work that I could do in an hour, it would take me like three hours or four hours to do. Just, you know, changing with those. Because when you when you pull when you pull the, back, the other screen on the screen, they take it back. Actually, it doesn't resize itself. So you have to resize it and then, uh, you know, drag it here, there, you know, it was, it's going to be hectic, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's true. But, that's, yeah. So as someone like, right, as an engineering graduate, like, do you still use your MacBook? Do you still love your, like, the Mac operating system? Oh, that's a whole <laughs> new topic right there. So if you want to jump to that topic, actually, like, as a student, uh, as a graduate, I would say, like, see, the problem with the MacBook, you actually, you would, you would get so relaxed, you will not, you will not have any problem with uh, hackers or uh, putting an antivirus or the system crashing down. That's the cool thing about Mac, you know, you never, you don't even, to, you don't even need to install an antivirus on your computer. That's the biggest thing, that's the biggest plus for Mac. But the downside you can't run any application on it except for Word and then you know, Microsoft Office and then searching the web. That's all you can do. Other than that, you can't be productive on it. Let's be honest. Like you can't be productive at all because even this, even some people run a they call it a virtual machine on yes. your Mac. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is not great at all. I tried that. I tried it. Actually, it's very slow. Even if you have a, a very fast processor with your Mac, it's still it's going to be slow, yeah. laggy, and uh, good performance as as if you have a, a dedicated like a Windows computer. That makes a, a, a whole world the difference, you know. Yeah. But yeah, in perspective, if you are doing light work and if you are like just browsing the internet, doing some reports, and you know that that's pretty much it. But you are not dealing with hefty softwares. You're good with a Mac. But if Actually, if you need softwares, that's why when you're when I'm an engineering student, the problem is you know having a Mac, I can't even run any application. So I have to go to the university. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the issue with that. And I get the results from here, and then I change it to Word, and then take it for, to the to the Mac to to work on the report. That's yeah. the issue there. So that's why I bought actually a Windows computer because you need actually a Windows computer, especially if you're running with the with the with the hefty applications. You need that. You can't live with a Mac. Yeah, I don't think so. 
Mac operating system can ever catch up with Windows operating system because Windows has been here like for uh, more than a decade, right? Exactly. And that's why like they have lots of lots of those softwares available only for their own operating system. Uh, the funny thing is that, but this was not the case with the Windows Phone operating system. Remember, like when they when that thing got discontinued because not lots of apps were available to download. Even like YouTube, I mean Google pulled the YouTube app from the App Store. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, they got lucky. Like to be honest, like yeah, they have been here in this business for a long time, so that's why. Do you think like Mac operating system is more fancier than the Windows operating system? See, the funny thing, they call Mac operating system, they call it uh, stupid people friendly. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> call it that, actually. It's Be true. careful, you might that. actually hurt some of our audience either, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they might dislike our video, you know? Please don't <laughs> dislike our video. <laughs> but it is actually, no, it is, it's, see, it's not about stupid people, but it's actually easier to use than a, than a Windows. That's a, it's a good thing. If you want something easy to use, just, you know, you don't even need to know anything. Like, you just, you could just open a Mac without even having a previous knowledge. You could just gain the knowledge itself, like, without even having any previous knowledge. Oh. Like, you could, yeah, that's even with my dad, man. Like, he bought, like, a Mac. He was a Windows guy. Mm. And, uh. Yeah, he switched to Mac. He didn't even get training, man. He didn't even get zero training. And actually, he used it, like, swiftly. We, he just even, like, we don't even, I didn't even teach him nothing, man. Mm. He just got, you know, by himself. So it's a very easy, very easy interface, a user-friendly interface, I would say. Very good user-friendly interface. Yeah. Windows is still easy, but it, there's many things into Windows, you know. You, like, people get confused. It's like people, people think, you know, it should be a coder or it should be, you know, into deep stuff, you know, it should be a, a hacker to get a Windows or something like that. <laughs> I personally, like, find Windows the easiest of all, to be honest. Like, I don't know, like, why people, like, find Windows. I mean, like, I know that Windows, when Windows 8 was launched the first time, people couldn't find the shutdown button, remember? Because they didn't have the start menu. Yes. Yeah, and then a lot of people were basically complaining about this, like, and then they had to release like a Windows 8.1 version just to include like a start menu. Yeah, mm -hmm. just to include a start menu. But overall, like uh, with Windows, I'm not sure about the, about the cost customization like in the Mac operating system, because in Windows operating system is 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 similar to Android nature. Like it's very free. You can customize Excellent. lots of things. Like you can find so many applications like to replace your original look of your desktop but but with the mac operating system i'm not sure since you have experience do you think like it allows you with more customization not really not as much as windows windows is more free is more is you could do anything essentially with windows but mac you do have some limitations yeah you you're not allowed to do anything that you want sometimes like things i i forgot like i did actually something and i thought it should be i should be able to do that like you should obviously able to do that but I couldn't actually. The Mac wouldn't allow you. Oh, Some people God. say it's actually they do that. Actually, Apple do that from a security perspective. They say if mm. we allow the user to go into every uh, bit of the operating system, they could you know get into the system easily. So oh. they always lock up. Yeah, this is this is this is this is what they why they do that. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. They limit that so that the user won't be able to to get into the system easily and then you know get knowledge of the system and then you know could hack other devices so it's from a security perspective yeah they do that yeah i, I was all, i'm also looking at these mac uh pro right i don't know what they call it they actually it's like a, a powerful powerful like a desktop thing yep the mac pro. Yeah, yeah yeah that thing it's called mac pro right yeah they call they call the mac imac imac right yeah yeah if, if it's that powerful but it's not running any applications. Like you cannot find the applications for it. Like what's the use of it? I know like when I was reading at the specs, like it had like monster, monster specs. I, I think I know the reason they're using it for the, is because of the final, uh, final cut, which yeah. YouTubers mostly use it, right? Yeah. Exactly. They are using, yeah, this is, this is, this is a good question actually. If you can't run most of the application on Mac, so why they are creating those powerful beats like it's a beast actually it's a very beast it's beast, a very yeah. powerful computer. you can't even find those in windows devices actually i think you can I find it nowadays no you can find it 
you can't uh, but see the, the build quality in mac actually it's outstanding you can't compare it to windows like the build quality the uh, even the, the look of it it's 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 appealing to the eye to be honest mm-hmm. but the, the the thing is as you said like if you are dealing with a very powerful computer where are you going to use it as you said most people they're going to use mac for video editing yes and that's what those people with the with the Mac Pro, this is the most powerful one. Actually, those people, most of them are in the movie industry, mm. so in the film industry, because actually it's it, it's a very friendly uh, it has a very friendly user interface for the film creator or the content creators. Yeah. So if you are actually, it's going to be a very good, and it actually it processes the video. You know, those even the heavy ones, the 4K videos, they process mm. it processes in a way substantial less time. So. Yeah, that's the reason for it. But still, for a, a regular person like uh, an engineer, I don't think that's a that's a good thing to have a Mac Pro. Uh, it's a very powerful computer, yet it yeah. is you can't install anything on it yet, right? So, but if you are a, a movie creator or a, a mm. YouTuber, that, that's that's your thing, I guess. But is Final Cut uh, included when you buy the Mac? Not, it's not. You it's have not, to you have to, to purchase it all separately. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and they have only restricted it to Mac operating system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but actually, I've used actually I use uh, Final Cut. Actually, it's a very good software. Actually, it's 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 user friendly. It's easy, and it is actually like it covers everything in there. Like you have everything you could do with the software. Mm. It is actually you have to learn. It. It's not it's not easy, but still, like it is like I know some people they buy a they call the a keyboard cover. Oh. They just put it on top of with shortcuts for uh for final cut pro so wow. they have it has actually shortcuts. yeah some people are so into this world you know with, with shortcuts and with those you know with the because there are special keys to do special uh, operations in, uh, in final cuts and they they are using that mm. so yeah some people are into this world so yeah yeah i see uh they don't have any gaming max right <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they only have those Mac, Mac iMacs, right? The powerful ones, but they don't have any gaming laptops, right? They're not, but they don't, they, they're basically not calling it iGaming Mac, right? Yeah. Because, like, mm-hmm. lots of, there are lots of like, gaming devices, like, available for Windows operating system. Yes. Yes. And you could actually run games on this, but. Because uh, uh, I was I, thinking I, about uh, Steam. Uh, I don't know if it is available on Mac, to be honest, or not, but I'm. Um, Positive that the games on Windows will be the, the, like I mean the games that are compatible with Windows are way more than the games compatible with the Mac OS. So oh, that's for that's sure. That's for sure. That's, yeah, for, that's sure. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Still, by the way, people are getting very mad at Apple because all their new uh, Mac computer laptops. I mean, they don't have an SD card. Oh, they don't <laughs> and, have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as a content creator, you need this SD slot. People got so angry about that because they need it because you just, you know, film with your camera and just take the SD and put it right away. Yes. Now yes. you have to get a dongle and getting a dongle is just an extra thing you need to carry with, carry uh, with you, you know, all the yeah. time. And yeah. that's a huge drawback. You know, people say like, why did you take it off? And like, as, uh, they use the Mac because of it is a, you know, some people they use it because it was a powerful machine. Yet it's a very good for content creator. Still it doesn't have an SD card slot for the laptops. Mm. So that's a big drawback. That's a them. big, big so, but, drawback. <laughs> yeah, a big drawback. But still, they actually still buy it and they buy a dongle with it. But so, they, they're just loyal fans. Like they see like Apple. Loyal fans, exactly. Yeah. And, and to be honest, if you are looking for quality, if you are looking for quality and if you are looking for something that's going to last you long, I would go with Mac, to be honest. Uh, it, it could it could last you 10, 12 years easily, to be honest. You don't even have to replace anything in the computer. It will run like a charm. Like a charm? As long as you don't, yeah, as long as you don't update it. <laughs> uh, update, oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. Like, they intentionally, like, slow down your devices, it, I know. It gets, yeah, it gets slow. But if you don't update it, and, uh, like, it, it runs like a charm, to be honest. And it's it's hefty, you know. It's it, The build quality is quite nice. Actually, my brother had a Mac, and he dropped it, actually, oh. from his back to yeah, and actually, it it got a big dent on it, and still it worked. It worked. It had nothing happened to it, you know. So the, if you are looking for build quality, I would say going with a Mac is number one. But at the end, it depends on the user. If he's like a if he's like a, an engineering student, a Mac wouldn't be a perfect choice for him unless you have like a 
another computer that he could do his work on, you know. Yeah. But at the, yeah. So at the end, it depends on the user. But True. if you are looking for the ultimate thing, ultimate thing, like everything into uh, uh, in, like integrated to one thing, because mm. like you want you want to sketch and you want to code and you want to browse the internet and you want to do everything. Mm. I think currently in the market, I'm looking. My eye goes onto the Surface Book Three, to be honest. Surface Book Three. Well, I have yep. I have a powerful thing. Like I have something which is more powerful than this, but it's not portable. It's called Surface Studio Two. Have you done research about yep. this? That's like a 28 <laughs> inch tablet. It looks amazing, to be honest. It looks like a beast. And it looks so good. Like even even the 28, it doesn't have a like. It's just a screen, right? It's a screen. It's it all even... in one. Like it has every. It, it does everything. It has a processor. It has the RAM. It has the uh, storage drive. Everything inside that uh, device. It's okay. all in one. Yeah. Yeah, all in one. And it's a powerful device, actually. Super. It's a very super. powerful. Device. Yeah, and actually, it's it looks good. It looks very good. So if you're looking for a desktop, that's that's your best bet it looks good it runs smooth and even uh, it is actually very friend user friendly like you could attach the pen to the side yeah. and you could actually lean into it like people lean into it and then draw yeah. like you could just the, the hinge the hinge itself they i think they took like one year to manufacture this hinge oh. because it yeah, actually it rotates into different different angles which mm-hmm. allows you they call the sketching mode oh and yeah. Mode. yeah yeah and they call the portrait mode where you could just see Actually, it's a very good computer, but this is a PC, not a laptop, so you can't carry it with you. I think they have tried to merge like PC with tablet in this case here, <laughs> right? Because yes, touch... yeah, yeah, it is a touch screen. Yeah, it looks super, super futuristic, like the way they were actually advertising it, right? Uh, those graphic designers like designing stuff, right? Looks super. Yes, and the price point, man, like it ranges from like four thousand to six thousand, like. Gosh, like super, super. Like... And I feel, and I feel what Microsoft did actually. They took this powerful machine and they, they shrunk it into the Surface Book yes. Three. <laughs> what I felt like, like if you want a powerful machine that you could, it's a portable essentially. You go with the Surface Book Three because it's just essentially like just like the the Surface Studio, but yeah. a portable model. You know, you could it's still a screen and you could interact with. You could detach. It should be an entire screen. So uh, that's what I feel Microsoft pulled that off with the Surface Book because some people actually are big fans with the Surface Studio. Yeah. Two. The, the first one, uh, the first Surface Studio 2 is just like a spec spam, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mm-hmm. Surface Studio 1 is just like, uh, uh, the Surface Book uh, Studio 2, I mean, is just like a spec spam from the Surface uh, Studio 1. Yeah. Even the the book, the book 3 and the book 2, is, they look exactly the same. It's just spec spam. So. Yeah. Because the because people like the design. That's what they say. People like the design. We're going to stick with the design. So and it is actually it's a slick design. It looks very good. Yeah. Uh, is it like, can you do some upgrades on it? Like, for example, because when I was doing my research, I heard like you, you're not able to upgrade uh, components in your uh, Surface Book 3. Like, is that to be true? Honest, this, this question actually in 2020, you're 2020 and in 2020 you can't abrogate anything. This is just an old computer where you could upgrade your RAM and your hard drive. But now everything is soldered on. Everything. It's soldered, right? So yeah. I, I think the Surface Studio 1 or, or 2, it actually you could upgrade just the, the SSD. Just the SSD. But yeah, but the RAM, that's it. It's over. The RAM everything is always going to be over. Yeah. 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 for the MacBook Pro. Everything is sold out, even the RAM, even the SSD, everything is sold out. So that's why when people buy a computer nowadays, they make sure that they buy the, the specs that they need. And yeah. some people, they even go with the high specs because they know they can't upgrade in the future. So he said, mm-hmm. I'm going to just buy one time and then I'll just put the entire, you know, my budget on it. So yeah, because you can't upgrade, like you can't even upgrade and even the battery itself, you can't change it anymore. Oh, you cannot even so, change that thing? You can't change anything in the yeah. nowadays computer. Buy something, that's it. It's it's done. Yeah, cause 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 right now I I have this Asus laptop and it has two gigabytes of uh, graphic cards. So it has uh, sixteen gigabytes of RAM. I mean, whenever like I mean, I think uh, two years ago, like it was running super slow. I just tossed in the SSD, installed it, 
and now it looks like super smooth like i'm just confused about this thing like i just i'm this is my i'm not confused i'm this is just my concern like for future users like like after five six years they will definitely think about like you know upgrading because these applications are getting giving like getting more and more resource hungry and exactly. yeah so yeah that's not not that's a uh, to me it's a drawback uh, like yeah it's a drawback i mean it's, it's still much much better than the ipad 2019 or ipad 2020 because uh, yes. when i was comparing the two i mean not from the operating system but spec wise surface book hmm. 3 like beats ipad 2020 in all department like to be honest like I- uh, Even but the only, only one the only one department actually the iPad is good at. Everybody agrees on that. Actually, from my research, everybody agrees that the iPad beats the Surface uh, Surface uh, Book or Surface Pro or any Surface uh, yeah. device in one area, which is actually the the interaction between the pen and the screen itself. Oh, it's, yes. oh, it's I... very. Yeah, that's that's the only that's the only very big you know drawback for. Uh, surface devices that the screen pen interface it's good it's not that bad it's very good it even have palm rejection uh, it is very it's great but still it has like it's not comparable with the ipad it's they're still a little bit behind the ipad mm-hmm. i see yeah. yeah so there's actually yeah but other than that as you said it's a beast you know it is a beast yeah that's true but, I'm looking for a computer that is upgradable, you know, from a RAM perspective and a hard drive. Uh, actually, it's, it's, it's a very tough decision now you're going to make because it's, there is, there is, there is even 20, 20 laptops, they could do that. But the point is with that, they're going to be bulky. They're mm-hmm. not going to be slick. That's they're going to be bulky. Yeah, yeah. so and there, actually, the Alienware, they just dropped, no, they, they dropped it actually a long time ago. They called Area 51, mm-hmm. Alienware, mm-hmm. actually customized everything in that computer even the cpu oh <laughs> imagine yeah you could even customize because even it takes like a, a desktop cpu not a, a laptop one so you could customize essentially everything but the drawback it's bulky yeah, uh, yeah. there is that yeah they, some companies actually they are going with that thing you know they say okay well a user could buy a computer from us but then he could essentially customize it to his needs in the future a new cpu comes out you could just pop it in you know mm. so yeah uh, it's a good it's a good thing it's a good thing to a company to have but the problem is this those computers will always be bulky you know it's not going to be futuristic looking mm, yeah yeah so what do you think about the future of laptops i mean not the tablets just the laptops that's like themselves like uh do you think like something big will happen to them like i will go actually with what bill gates said he said the future of computers is gonna be uh, that the user could inter interact with the screen oh. and could inter- yeah he said that's the future of computer computers the or the laptops like mm-hmm. it should it should be a merge experience with the user that the user should interact with the screen not just by touching even by writing on it even by uh, the, even Thank he said you. even hologram oh hologram hologram yeah like he should be a very interaction experience with the user and the device. So it shouldn't be just a screen with a keyboard. This is like mm. old days now. Uh, it should be like, yeah, the user should be immersed into the screen, you know? And that's that's the future of computers, I would say. That, and we could see the future actually in the iPads and the in the tablets in themselves. This is the future, you know? The only drawback, it doesn't have an operating system. <laughs> so if it does have that, if it does have its own operating system and does everything, you know, just like the Surface Book Pro, uh, Surface Book 3 or Surface mm. Book Line. Mm. That's it. You got it all in one package. Yeah. 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 I-, I was just thinking, like, why can these manufacturers, like, not work together towards, like... I mean, I know it's going to be against their profit, against their own goals. Like, uh, like my vision is, like... I don't know, like, Bill Gates, like, also used to have this vision, like, one Windows for all devices. Yeah. Like, but that thing didn't come true, you know? Yes. It's like, that's one, this is actually one of my ambition if it comes through. Like, I want, like, Windows on all devices. Like, I want Windows even on Mac books. I want Windows on <laughs> iPads as well. Because just want to yeah, show them, like, the power of, like, Windows, you know, to everyone. By the way, if, if, if Apple, you know, had an agreement with Macros, imagine if those both companies have an agreement and they build the ultimate computer. When you turn it on, you could choose. Yes. You're going to work with Windows. Or or or, uh, or 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 Mac OS. Imagine that. Yeah, that's... And it's gonna be. And the build quality is 
is the apple wise so it's very very yeah. uh, you know very yeah, it's a very good quality and then the operating system uh, but the, the operating system and the what do you call it, the the functionalities of it is a windows like yeah so or a, or a microsoft wise that's the going to be the beast of all laptops you know everybody yeah. would buy that at the end, you know that's... it's going to be like one ultimate but it's not never it's never going to happen because those companies need to make money right true true yeah the more products you have the more money you're going to make and if you take one product the line that's mm. less money you're gonna make or if you or if you take the ipad off that's that's money if you take so it's always a give you know a give and take yes true so yeah. so another topic um have you ever talked with the apple support team regarding your apple devices and if yes how did you see it were they helpful actually i have never talked to the uh because i I never found it. I never had an issue to be honest with my computer. Mm. To be honest, yeah, I never had an issue, like oh. never. Yeah. So the only thing people like they talk about if they for a replacement or that's yeah. that's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, uh, you most people have Apple Care. When they do that, they just cover everything in the computer. Yes. And as I said, the build quality of Mac is is just phenomenal, and you want find issues with the operating system i thought so it's an easy operating system so you're not using anything that that's going to damage the computer so i don't find, i didn't find any moment uh, using my mac that i need to contact apple regarding an issue to be honest mm, i see because i was hearing some complaints that the uh, mac like the apple support team they were not that helpful to some of those youtubers when they are trying to replace something under warranty so that's why I just wanted to know about your experience. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have in that field, but yeah. Yeah. It might be cool, but yeah, I, I, but from a perspective of, of having issues with the computer, like lagging or, uh, or getting a virus into it, uh, it's it never happened. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just wanted to ask about your family, if you could name like who's using what, and then I will do the same thing. Actually, my, I'm using a Mac and Windows both mm -hmm. <laughs> because I need I need the Windows device. Uh -huh. And then yeah, and then uh, my mom just has an iPad. Mm -hmm. And then my dad uses a Mac. Mm -hmm. And my brother uses a Mac. So I guess we are a Mac family overall. Yes, overall. So Mac is actually more powerful in your in your family. Yeah. Because it's it's reliable. That's why. Because yeah. you don't need you, like we, because we, man, everybody gets a antivirus here and there. You know, always because I had the Windows before. Yes. And I had a problem with the viruses and stuff. But having a Mac, you just you just get out of this world. You know, just do your because most of the job that we do is just requires you know internet and then you yeah. know some documents. That's it. But viruses are also getting common, like in uh, with the Mac operating system, like these ransomwares. You know holding like your computer and uh, like uh, locking your files and documents and then asking for ransom you're also gonna oh. yeah oh. but like they still need like antiviruses as well like I've, i'm seeing them like the trend is getting like i mean they're becoming more similar to windows when it comes to the virus feel like or the virus world uh so in my family i forgot to say that i personally mm. use windows um yeah I, I have like a windows machine and my sister also has a windows two of my sisters also has like they have like windows machine my brother also has a windows machine my dad also has a windows machine my mom only has ipad and that's it so we're totally uh, opposite of you guys <laughs> yeah yeah it, see, yeah, it depends. It depends. Actually, if you are a windows guy, it's a hard, it's a hard switch by the way it's going to be because you're not accept the fact because see macbooks are quite expensive to be honest it's not yes. cheap but the point is the point is that they are reliable and people they say okay anyways like i'm not gonna stay with my computers for more than three years anyways i'm gonna throw it away yeah. so most people actually like that because you'll get bored to be honest yeah and after three years you'll get bored of your computer so you just want to throw it away so he said it's not a very good investment to have if i'm gonna throw it anyways after three years i'm gonna get bored of it some people think it of that way, you know, mm -hmm. but other people say, okay, I'm fine of dropping, you know, this amount of money of the computer, but I'll keep it for 12 years or 10 years. Yes. So always, this is, this is the debate, you know, are you willing to, to stay with the same computer for, you know, this some X, X amount of year or not? So, 
it depends at the end but i'm pretty sure like these windows uh devices i mean manufactured by i mean these manufacturers such as lenovo or hp or azus or dell like i have noted that as you as long as you buy their devices above thousand dollar are like between thousand to fifteen hundred you can get a you can get a very good and decent quality device from them like for example my asus laptop i have i have been using it for almost like five years now i believe yeah five years now my uh my brother actually has like a sony i dropped it personally and like when you actually open the laptop there's a big, big giant actually hole in it. Like I, I damaged the plastic, but it's still functional. There's no uh, laggy performance. It has a eight, eight gigabytes of RAM and it still can run like some heavy applications. Like I mean, not games itself, not games, but it can run like some heavy applications such as like engineering softwares or video editing softwares. I even. What's the chassis of the computer made of? Uh, it yeah, it's plastic. Like it was, a, yeah. it was cheap laptop, like Sony Vio, yeah. and I mean they have discontinued it right now. But I mean, if you look at the damage, it's still runnable. It can still run fine. Mm. Yeah, it can st it's, it's still awesome to use it, man. Yeah, and he's still using it. I mean, he right now he has two laptops. Uh, one is a gaming laptop, and one is a non-gaming laptop. I mean, the one which is broken is not a gaming laptop, but the performance-wise, mm. it's still fine. Like. Because the only issue I have with uh, Apple devices is that they are charging you more for their goodwill, for their reputation. This is actually a very good point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're right. They charge actually just for the logo of the Apple logo being on yeah. the device. That's actually, yeah, that's a good point to raise. Exactly. It's true, which is true actually. And they, it's out of reputation, you know. Yeah. If they charge if they if they charge those computers to be less. By the way, I was I was reading the other day. Do you know how much the like the iPhone itself? When they the Apple sells the iPhone, they sell like for a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. And if you go to the iPad Mini mm -hmm. with a 3G, which has the expected your SIM card essentially on it, yeah, which is a bigger screen, bigger screen, and uh, even better specs, I would say, yeah. except for the camera. Maybe the camera a little bit better on the iPhone, uh. but overall, like it will cost you like three hundred to hundred two hundred ninety nine dollars. Like how can you? <laughs> so. <laughs> So the iPhone, then I, I made my research. Actually, they make a profit out of the iPhone itself, like 10 times the price of it, 10 times. Mm. So imagine, so if the iPhone costs $100, they're going to charge you $1,000. So imagine, so they make a huge, huge profit out of it. Yeah, and then they intentionally because, slow it down as well, you know? Yes, yeah, so you buy a new one. Yeah. Yeah, even, even man Windows, if you update it like to the decent version, it will get also slower. So I think that's the norm, you know? That's the norm. You should, yeah. Every every manufacturer need to do that because if the computer just keeps working, you will never buy a new one, and then what's the point, you know? Another thing yeah. I wanted to bring up to you is about the Apple ecosystem, because a lot of people they like the Apple ecosystem. For example, if you're doing something in one of the devices, if you're writing an email or if you're typing something, you can basically continue that same work. That you had it in, a, in that you, that you had it in your other device, you can continue the same work in your other device, or yes. or, or the connectivity of the Apple devices or the interaction between Apple devices is so uniform, like they can easily get connected to each other, and that's why people, a lot of people, they love the ecosystem. Because when I was watching one of video about uh, those tech guys, tech reviewer guys on YouTube, right? Uh, most of these people, when they say like they like their iPhone, they basically mention that it's only because of the ecosystem. I know what you're saying. It's exactly true, by the way. Yeah. That's they do that. Yeah, because it's because even but that's why they bring always new products to Apple. You know, they brought the the Apple Watch. Now you could integrate the Apple Watch with the iPhone itself. Yeah. So if the Apple TV, and then they call they have a new thing. They call it Apple Music. It's a device as well. I forgot the name of it. Uh, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, uh, HomePod. They called HomePod. HomePod. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything is integrated. Yeah, that's that's one thing Apple actually does very well. They integrate everything into each other. Yeah. But it all comes out of cost. Man. It definitely comes with the it's cost. Not yeah. Cheap. Nothing is cheap it's with Apple. Cheap yeah. If you wanna if you wanna experience this all integrated body functional system, you have to get everything from Apple, from your watch, from your phone, from your laptop. Yes. So, so they, as if 
I, I feel it's just like a force. They force you to buy, uh, like, since you have an iPhone, mm. you should have a Mac. Okay. You know, yes. you can't go with, you can't go with any, 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 uh, any, any Windows device. You can go, uh, but, but it's very opposite. painful. Remember, the route yeah, exactly. we took is yeah. super painful. Yes. Uh, but it is the opposite with Windows. By the way, when you buy an Android phone, you could go with any Windows device, even an Apple. You could with, go with an Apple device as well. Oh, you know? yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but with with Apple, no. But when you are with an iPhone, it's it, it will not be the same experience if you are using a, a Mac or a Windows. Yes. That's so it is it's way integrated then. Yeah, it is a good integration system, but it comes out of a cost, you know, it's not free. Mm-hmm. That's true. And by the way, this integration you like, uh, for example, when you said you're gonna do like when you write a word document on your computer, you could carry it carry it on on your yeah on your phone. Yeah. You could do that up to a limit. You know, I think you should you just have five five gigs of cloud storage. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I see. Even even when you, even when you take pictures from your phone, it will show up on your computer. But yeah, there is uh, there is a limit. You could you could pay more, you will get more uh, cloud storage. But still. Yeah, from an integration system, it is the best. I could tell you that. It's true. But it comes out of a cost. But Windows is also like catching up. Like, for example, they have this Windows Phone Companion uh, app on their Windows 10 uh, on their Windows 10 operating system. Like, So basically what you can do is that you can call as well as you can text from within your Windows 10. They have joined forces with Google together for some reason. Like, they They accepted their defeat when it came to... Uh, Windows Phone department, so they basically discontinued it, and now they're building apps for uh, Android. Actually, for some reason, I don't know if you go to Microsoft page, they have plenty of mm-hmm. applications for Android devices for some reason. So I think we have uh, talked for an hour, but so I will ask like one question about your future plan when it comes to buying a laptop. Do you have any plans to upgrade? whether it's the specs or whether it's the laptop themselves, like do you want to like purchase like a laptop or do you have something specifically in your mind that you're willing to buy it in the near future? Actually, for now, I, as I said, I have two computers. I'd actually, it's, having getting two computers, it's, it's uh, two laptops is actually a pain, you know? It's not yeah. a good thing. I want to have a computer the ultimate, you know? I could get rid of the Mac and the uh, the, Alien, uh, the Windows, okay. both of them. Yeah, and it makes both of them by one computer. Mm. And thinking about it, I want a computer that is portable, obviously. Mm. And I want it that get, could perform very well and pressure. Yeah. And I want to have a good experience, to be honest. And I want something to write on, because actually, I like writing, to be honest. Oh. And I like to take notes. Yeah, I'm that kind of person, you know. I like to take notes. I like to... But I like everything to be in one package. I don't like to ha- to write notes on an iPad and I have to, yes. for example, to carry it on my PC. Like, I want to do everything in one system, you know. I don't want to carry all on or ha- using cloud or something like that. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I like everything in one package. And, if, uh, you know, go- so doing my research, I will upgrade eventually. But to what? I will go, actually, if I want to do it, I'll go with the Surface Book Three. Uh, Surface Book Three, yep. Mm, I see. Yeah. I know it's, it's expensive call, but if it is gonna st- and by the way, the build quality. The, talking about the build quality, I said you know Mac has a very good quality, a build quality. By the way, the Surface Book also have a very good yes. build quality. Yeah, yeah. It's actually not plastic. It's, it's like mag- magnesium. Yeah, magnesium. Like yeah. A, yep. It's a very nice finish. You know, it's just like aluminum. So. Yeah. The build quality actually on it, it's it's very good, you know, it's not cheap. Mm-hmm. And even from the reviews, it feels hefty, you know, it feels like it's a hefty computer. It's not like, uh, it's, it's built to last, you know, just like the MacBook. So, yeah, that's if I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to go with the ZenBook Audio. I wanted to actually, it was my, like, I was thinking about it for a whole long time, but I said, like, should I go with performance and then neglect, you know, uh, something like it's hefty, you know, a big comp- neglect, you know, other features? Yeah. But or should I go with creativity? I chose creativity, man, you know? Mm-hmm. Surface Book is creative people, I think. So if I ever upgrade to a device, because right now I don't have any intention to upgrade for now because I'm not traveling a lot. Like I'm already stuck with my 17-inch Asus 
uh, G751 JM laptop like it's a huge device like it's a gaming laptop but if I ever upgrade that would be razor blade 15 inch why because I'm not a type of guy like who likes to write or touch screen touch on the screen uh, I'm not a big fan of the fan like using pens uh, I mean it's my own style I'm, I'm, a, I'm just biased because I don't see any need I mean I don't see any use of it for myself like for other people who are actually artists or graphic designers or uh, guys that actually love creativity that's for them but for me I like to st uh, stick with the traditional keyboard and using mouse so for me the choice will definitely be ra razor blade yeah, that's exactly yeah, exactly right. It's all about preferences, you know, what type of person yeah. you are, what type of things you like. So yeah, go with your heart. Don't go with what people say. You know? Yeah, I agree as well. So uh, that's it, folks, for today. Thanks a lot, Mustafa. Uh, we will definitely be Thank having you. more discussions about different topics. Like, uh, if you guys like this video, please feel free to leave a comment below, uh, share it, like it. Hit that like button. Peace.